Alex here with a legal nuts and bolts video on workers comp. Similar to my other main topics on this channel, one of them being um, unemployment insurance, which lots of people run into, ordinary people, and um, high conflict child custody. Again, lots of ordinary people run into family court. Um, I feel like this topic is something that I probably would have done a long time ago if I would have just not forgot to do it. So there's a lot of teeny tiny details with regards to how workers' compensation works, and that's not the point of this channel. So you just have to take the video for what it is, understand that I'm just going over some of the overarching general ideas behind workers' compensation, and all of the actual details and the law and stuff have to be researched, or you have to consult an attorney and stuff like that. So um, I made a list because there was quite a bit to go over, even though it's not going to be something I go in depth. First being who has to get insurance. With any law, it could vary wildly from state to state, and I mean wildly. In Nevada, it looks to me like anybody who has even one employee has to get it. The only exception that I have seen is if you are that employee. So if it's like a teeny tiny business that you make and it's just you by yourself, then you don't have to get it. But everyone else, I mean, you could have like one of those... Um, taco trucks and it's just like you and one other person that's helping you out and that one other person you're gonna have to get it it's just how it is in nevada um for for what it's worth i did some research and it doesn't look like the price of un or of a uh, workers compensation is that outrageous so it, it seems like maybe to somebody who hasn't thought of this before that might seem unfair and it might be like way too expensive but from what i've seen it's it's not um who is defined as an employee is another thing that's not quite what you might think. So I've seen a whole bunch of laws and I've seen a case law precedent in Nevada on this. And there, there are these like different ways that they go about defining a contractor versus an employee. But from what I've seen in Nevada's workers' compensation statutory scheme, it has its own version of what an employee is, its own definition, and it's much broader. So, of course your own research but from what i've seen you may have this idea of employee versus contractor when actually you have to check the law because if it's like nevada even contractors are included in the definition of employee and they are supposed to get um covered by workers compensation as well there's some um curious language in there i don't know if it was about subcontractors or something like that i i didn't look at it too carefully i just know that it, they really have their own definition of employee, and from what I've seen, it looks a lot broader. So, um, the interesting thing about workers' compensation is that there's kind of, it seems to me like there's this kind of bargain. So, like, employees are supposed to get insured and covered if they get hurt at work, but employers also get a benefit, which is they get some kind of immunity to lawsuits. Um, of course, there's probably exceptions to that, depending on if an employer has done something especially egregious. Perhaps there's um, even negligence looks to be cut. So like say the employer is negligent and somebody gets hurt, they seem to get immunity from that too. The hurt person still gets covered and they get their medical bills and stuff paid for. But there may be, I don't know, there may be limits to that. So I did find it interesting that if an employer is complying with the law and they get workers' compensation, that they are protected from lawsuits that have to do with those types of injuries. And one of the things I was going to say was that actually seems kind of nice because with lawsuits, like if you sue your boss because you got hurt at work, you have to show, number one, you have to show the damages, which I guess is kind of obvious. But number two, you have to show that they did something wrong that made them liable. But for workers' compensation, it doesn't seem to me that really anybody has to be doing anything wrong like from what i have looked at people who just for example maybe a miner who just goes underground a whole bunch of times and, and their lungs get messed up or even like an office worker who gets carpal tunnel that stuff isn't really something that i imagine an employer would be at fault for that's just what i was talking about with you know, our human bodies have sort of a wear and tear limit in certain areas when we do certain things. And it seems to me like workers' comp does cover that kind of stuff. So 
yeah, there's this idea with workers' comp that you don't really have to show that anybody did anything wrong. You just have to show that there was an injury. There's still some some particular things that I've seen come up. Like, it seems that you have to be doing your actual job. And there are cases that come up that deal with, I guess you could call it curious situations. For example, some employees are considered traveling employees or traveling workers. Like, they have to go to other parts of the country or the world for their job. And they have case law that would kind of surprise people, I think. I've seen, like, a traveling employee who went to, like, ride around on an ATV after work. And he got hurt, and the employer was kind of ticked off because they were like, that doesn't have anything to do with his job. But the Supreme Court was like, well, he's a traveling employee, and if he's a traveling employee and he's doing reasonable recreational stuff while he's, you know, off his ship, that counts, and the guy still got covered. Um, and I've also seen other situations that you think would be covered but aren't. There was this one case, I guess this guy was an alcoholic, and he had a seizure while he was driving his truck, and he crashed it. Um, he was like a construction worker or something, and he got injured or a minor, and he did not get covered. And it was odd because it didn't look like he was driving drunk when he crashed the vehicle. It looked like what they said was that the reason he had the seizure, which caused the crash, was because of stuff that didn't have to do with his work. I mean, it sounded to me like this is a person who just drank a lot, just he didn't drink on the job. And it didn't matter because the source of the injury wasn't related to the job he was doing. So there are quite a few curious things that I've seen in the case law. I hope that by bringing this stuff up, people think more about it. I don't know. People might be, you know, not wanting to file a claim because they might think, oh, no, this isn't covered. But you guys should really check. Because I was quite surprised having seen so many appeals come down, appellate dispositions come down from the Supreme Court. How curious and particular and how many times I would have guessed wrong the things that are covered by workers' comp. Um, I've seen, I could have sworn that there are, there seem to be some kind of accommodations that have, they have to do, they have to give the employee who is injured, um, whether they just change the job to a different type of job in the same company that doesn't involve the same strain or whether the employee doesn't have to work as much. Um, so that that's another thing that's interesting is uh, this idea that you can keep your job, but you might not have to do it as as much as before while you're getting better, maybe permanently. Like these are all things to look into. I'm not going to go. You, there's going to be other channels out there too. There's going to be lawyers who do this kind of stuff who have YouTube channels that you can watch and learn um, a lot more of this. Again, guys, I'm just going to stick with the overarching principles. Um, of course, the medical expenses are covered. I've also seen cases come down where it looks like somebody gets some kind of award or they get denied, and then the person's injury gets worse or different or changes in some way, and they reopen their claim, and they get checked again, and they they get you know a new analysis and an increase in benefits and stuff like that. So that's another thing I did want to let you guys know about is you may go to workers' comp, you may get your disposition and get your benefits and then find out that you have to go back and reopen your case because something you just didn't know came up. I've seen a lot of case law come down on this. Um, it looks like the employees, employers, or maybe I shouldn't even say the employees, it looks like the insurance companies are more aggressive about fighting when somebody tries to reopen a case. Um, appeals, yeah, so it seems very similar to the unemployment appeals. I did a video on this. Um, it seems like you file a claim and then you may get some kind of contact from somebody over the phone or have to go in there and meet them um, to answer questions regarding your claim. I've seen that it involves like doctors and, and doctor's visits and reports from doctors and possibly testimony from doctors. If you don't get a claim that you're happy with, I've seen that uh, people can file an appeal just like with um, unemployment and you get... I guess they call it um, an appeals hearing with an appeals officer. This is not in the court system, but just like with the unemployment, um, what do they call it, tribunal, you can still get to the court system if you don't like the response from the appeal officer. Um, it looks to me like just like with unemployment, you can do a petition for judicial review, which then gets you into the court system itself. I think at this point, I've covered most of the generalities of workers' comp. If anybody has any questions or comments, feel free to post them down in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time.